Hey everyone, I made this tutorial to show you how to make pizza while you're stuck at home. If you enjoyed this video, please follow the link below to donate to the PGLS Employee Relief Fund. Alright, so for this dough recipe we're going to be using 480 grams of King Arthur bread flour, 322 grams of water, 11 grams of fine sea salt, 13 grams of olive oil, and a half a teaspoon of active dry yeast. The first step in the process is to pour the water into the flour and you're going to want to save about a quarter cup of water. And then we're going to mix that up and then mix it up just till all of the dry parts are incorporated. Then after we finish mixing this, we're going to let it rest for 30 minutes. This is called an autolyse. Just uh, allows time to build some gluten development. And also um, releases amylase, which uh, releases sugar from the starches. Alright, so once all those dry bits are incorporated, I'm going to cover that and then let it rest for 30 minutes. So thanks to Movie Magic, I got one that's already been resting for 30 minutes. And as you can see, there's a good amount of gluten development already. So now we're going to add the other ingredients. So because this is active dry yeast, we need to dissolve it in water before we add it to the dough. So generally I prefer to use instant yeast, but it's hard to find that at grocery stores. So today we're just using the active yeast. So we're going to mix that in there. along with the salt. So if you have the instant yeast, you could just put it directly in the dough without dissolving it in water. And you wanna make sure that water is warm, the water that you dissolve the yeast in. You're just kind of folding it over on itself. All right, so I fast forwarded a little bit and now it's starting to be a little smoother. So I'm gonna start adding the olive oil in. Olive oil in a little bit at a time. So this dough is about a 68% hydration, which is a little high for a uh, pizza usually, but I feel that when you're cooking in a home oven, the pizzas come out dry a lot of the time, so I bumped up the hydration a little bit. So just keep adding a little bit of olive oil at a time, probably mixing for a total of about 10 minutes. rest of the olive oil and you're just going to keep going till it's just nice and smooth all right so I fast forward it again I've been mixing for about 13 minutes now 
the dough's starting to s smooth out a bit. So this is what you're looking for. Um, so we're going to cover this up and then come back to it in about five minutes and check to see um, that the gluten is fully developed. Alright, so it's been about five minutes, so we're going to take a look at our dough. So we're going to do what is called a window pane test. So you just pull apart a little bit of the dough to the point where you can start to see through it. And if it holds together like that, then you know it's good to go. Um, so, yeah, we're just going to let this dough rest for another 20 minutes, then we're going to go ahead and ball it. Alright, so it's been 20 minutes, so we're going to go ahead and ball the dough. So this recipe makes two 400 gram dough balls. So if you have a scale, great, use a scale. If not, just cut it in half. Just try your best to guess. Uh, so we're going to take it out. Then use a dough knife. Cut it in half. So we're just over 400 here, so take some off. Alright, 406, that's close enough. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and ball both of these. So to ball dough, you want to just find a smooth part of the dough. And then turn it in on itself, like this. And then once you have a nice circle, take the other side and seal it up like this. We'll do the same thing with the other dough ball. Then you're going to want to just go ahead and put these into containers. Uh, I have these circular containers here that I use. So just put one dough ball on each. We're going to go ahead and put those in the fridge. And then you're going to want to let these dough balls sit in the fridge ideally for two days, but we can use them tomorrow too. One or two days is good. So, All right, so here's our dough ball that's been proofing in the fridge for two days. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and pull it out, stretch it, top it, and then toss it in the oven. So. Um, you have to be really gentle when you take it out. Just kind of loosen it up on the sides. I'll throw a little flour in there to help get it out. And then flip it over. All right. We'll dust a little flour on top. A little bit underneath. All right, then the next step is to develop your crust. So just push some air out to the sides. Like I said, this is a higher hydration dough. So you don't want to pick it up or toss it around or anything like that. You can do most of the stretching on the table. Then we got a launching peel over here. So I grabbed this one from work, but you can pretty much use anything that's flat, uh, preferably wood because it slides off a bit easier. So we'll just dust a little flour on here. And then I'm just going to pick it up to do the final stretches. Put it on the peel. Shape it into a nice circle. Alright, now we're ready to top it. So I just got some San Marzano tomatoes from Costco here. I just blended them up, added some garlic, salt, pepper. So I'm just going to do like five or six spoonfuls on here. Spread it around. Maybe a little more. Just leave about an inch around the edge. Then 
Then I got some whole milk, low moisture mozzarella. So you're gonna wanna grab the block, not the shredded stuff, and then shred it up yourself because the pre-shredded stuff has cellulose on it and it won't melt as well. So just a nice even layer of that. You're probably gonna wanna put less on than you think. So this is probably good enough right here. And then before you launch it in the oven, this is very important. You're gonna to wanna to shake it around, make sure it's moving. Otherwise it'll stick and your launch won't be good. All right, so this is the oven setup we're working with. Um, you're gonna to wanna to put your pizza stone on the bottom rack there. And then if you have another pizza stone, put it on the next rack up to get some top heat coming down on the pizza. I don't have another pizza stone, so I'm just gonna use uh, my Challenger breadware pan on top of that. And then um, you're gonna to wanna to preheat the pizza stone at 550 for an extra 30 minutes after your oven says it's preheated. And then for about 10 minutes, put the broiler on to heat up that top heat element. So I already did that, so I'm gonna turn the broiler off, put it back to 550. And then I'm gonna launch the pizza. So like I said, make sure the pizza's moving. And then you're just gonna shimmy it off onto the pizza stone. So go put the end of it on the end of the pizza stone and just slide it off. And then we're gonna let that cook for about five or six minutes and then turn it. All right, so it's been cooking for about six minutes now. So we're just gonna very carefully slide this underneath it, pull it out and give it a turn. We're just gonna let that cook until the crust is nice and brown. So after five more minutes in the oven, we have a great New York style pizza. Um, if you have any questions, just feel free to ask me in the comments. Stay safe, stay inside.